My name is Frank Gasparro and I've been a painter for 35 years. I am self-taught and uh, you know just been doing my thing for the past 35 years. Uh, it's been an interesting journey and uh, it's been rewarding. Uh, it definitely can be challenging and uh, you know disappointing but uh, it's interesting nonetheless uh, sometimes people ask me oh you're an artist uh, oh your life is great it's easy it's all these things not true uh, I have to work a job to maintain my lifestyle as an artist I I've had success as an artist as a painter uh, but not enough to keep me uh, supported and uh, m keep my uh, painting habit supported. My first painting, I do remember, I started at 30 years old, like I said, and my first paintings I did in Provincetown. I rented a space with friends of mine in Provincetown, and I brought with me canvas, acrylic paints, and I painted, I started painting, uh, no information really background in painting. So it was a learning process of using acrylic paints. And I painted on the top of a stairwell. So think of a cottage and at the Cape with a stairwell going up and a little, like a little space on the side of the stairwell that was maybe two feet wide. Uh, so I would send up, set up my first canvas was 50 by 50 inches and I set it up on that little stairwell space on the side of the stairwell and would actually paint right there. I had put a couple of spotlights up. So all my work has always been indoor uh, under artificial light because I paint from what's happening in my mind. Uh, it's fine. You know, I don't have to be outside trying to capture the light of the day. My first painting was a grid painting. Uh, it was all gradations of pink. So the challenge was to learn about color, learn how to make a straight line, uh, because geometry always interested me. So my painting consisted of all geometric forms and shapes. So yes, my first painting was a grid of squares, uh, two inches by two inches and it was gradations of pink. Very, very subtle, so you barely could see the gradation from one from one square to the next, but it was, it was there and it was happening. So I did a few paintings uh, at the Cape that were a lot of geometry, a lot of uh, gradi gradient color, and that first painting at the Cape that summer, I sold, you know, and I, uh, people saw my work, uh, were always interested in it, and like I say, I've been doing this for 35 years and people have always been interested in my work. Uh, I have always been able to sell work, uh, not as much as I would like to, but uh, I guess any sales are, are good because what happens is these paintings find their place in time. So they have a home, they have someone who cares for them, and uh, I have a studio full of paintings so I have enough of my own collection to care for. I'm happy to get it out to people who are interested in it. My art has changed uh, over the years from acrylics to oil paints. I like the oil because I can move it around on the canvas. It's more fluid. Uh, takes longer to dry so I can work wet on wet. Uh, I can be wildly creative using wet on wet surfaces. What I really like to do is prime a canvas and have a smooth surface. surface. Paint with Paint, paint something on the canvas in oil and this all has to happen really fast so timing is an issue too paint something on the canvas in oil then put another painting over it in oil again so it's wet on wet the painting on top of it usually is very heavy paint uh, that I end up scraping off revealing what's under the surface the first initial painting stains the surface of the, of the canvas so that image is, is like a ghost image there, so it does stay on the canvas. And then scraping, the other oil sits on top of that because the canvas has already absorbed its color and oil. So when I put a heavier impasto coat on, I can scrape it off, reveal what's underneath, and still maintain 
uh, the surface that I, I want left of the second painting. The question has always, well, actually the question hasn't been asked. I sort of give the information to people because they see paintings with palettes of all kinds of colors and what the story is behind that is the paint that's scraped off from these canvases is stored in jars because I'm not about to throw out hundreds of dollars worth of oil paint so I just store it in jars and use it at a, at a later date on another canvas. It's all very random so uh, the palettes on the canvas that you see this heavy impasto paint can be multicolored from who knows how many paintings of the past I recently just finished a painting that I was using uh, dried oil paint. You know, the skin on the top might have been like a quarter of an inch dried. Peel that off, got to the oil paint underneath, and I have been using, still using paints from 20 to 25 years ago, you know, that I scraped off previous canvases. So it's, it's interesting. It's like a history of energy and movement that's carried on from one painting to another. So everything isn't totally new. I'm, I'm using something from a previous painting. So it, I just, I don't know, it makes it more interesting and definitely more dynamic for me. Obviously, I, I want it to be exciting and challenging and dynamic. I, I, I've used that word, but I feel that I'm not just going to stand there and do a painting. I mean, what purpose does it serve? You know, it's not an exercise f for me. It's something to be excited about, something to turn the viewer on to. So my goal is always to turn the viewer on. You know, try and turn people on to what I do. I may not speak a language that people are familiar with, but there is familiarity there, being color or movement. Uh, texture, even the design or pieces of objects that are on canvases people can relate to. So I, I think I have a good rapport with the viewers of my work, even though they may not have a total understanding of it, but people are always interested because it is different. And I have looked at a lot of work over the years as an artist, and I really feel that a lot of what I do is very unique. So it's unique to my signature, and it's unique to me, and I think what makes that so wonderful is because I've just sort of made up my own language as I've gone along, so I haven't really followed any rules. But essentially, it's uh, just trying to be creative, uh, doing my thing, trying to turn people on, and being interested. I, I'm always turned on by my work, so that's what my that's what generates me. That's what that's what makes me want to do more is because I'm turned on by it. I love looking at some of the things that I do and uh, I've never really discarded or thrown paintings away. So I do have a long history of paintings from the very beginning uh, to now. And uh, sure, I'm uh, sort of a warehouse of artwork, but I try and keep it stored properly and uh, because it's just not something that I'm not that I feel I can't care for. I am the caretaker of my own work and people that collect my work, which I'm happy that people do collect my work, are caretakers of my work also. But more than being caretakers, there's someone who's interested in it or has turned them on in some way or is helping their open their view to something. Like I say, I think the most rewarding thing being an artist is just having people enjoy what I do. Commentary is always good. I feel uh, the negative and the positive is, is great. No comment at all uh, are just sort of a turn off because that means what you're doing is really not interesting. So if, if people can feel, uh, you know, negative or positive about what they're viewing, uh, that's all welcomed as far as I'm concerned because uh, you're getting people to express themselves about, about you know, what it is they're viewing. Uh, I think that sort of covers anything I need to say about myself or about my art. Uh, 35 years, I hope to have a lot more time painting and making art. And uh, in closing, I should say that, you know, any opportunity that you have to view my work, uh, please do. And uh, comments are always welcome. Thank you.